Hello everybody, I hope you're all well and welcome back to Voice Notes with Jordan Teresa. How is everybody today? I am, so what, what, today is the 5th of July. It's the 5th of July and it's post-election day. London is, none of the constituencies in London are Tory for the first time since 1870. And you know what I've got to say? Firstly, Jeremy Corbyn won his seat in Islington North, retained rather his seat in Islington North. Fucking love that. Um, So fucking happy for him. Got his little card here. Um, So, so happy for him, man. Like it's, yeah, like I I cannot express my happiness like for Jeremy Corbyn. Um, But you know, one thing I will say, I will never, ever forgive Keir Starmer for robbing me of the joy of the Tories being out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't think I will ever be as happy as I was in 2019 or like ever as politically positive as I was in 2019 when um, Jeremy Corbyn was the leader of the Labour Party. And I literally hate Keir Starmer so much. Like, man, guys, I am this man's op. Like I'm actually Keir Starmer's number one op. I remember I, you know, when I was like quite active on my Instagram stories, um, I used to post a lot about, <laughs> about Keir Starmer. Um, and I remember I posted something like, it's really weird how British people know so much about American politics when like, I doubt Brad from California knows who Keir Starmer is. And I thought that was, that made me giggle. <laughs> I was giggling. So I posted it on my story and someone replied like, oh my God, Keir Starmer's a politician. I just thought he was like a friend of yours that you like hated. And I was like, no, babe, Keir Starmer would never be my friend. Fucking little prick. Um, Yeah, so I'm feeling like obviously happy. Um, Specifically, I feel most happy about like the Jeremy Corbyn news because for a while the exit poll was, it was looking like he was going to lose. Like mostly I feel just really happy for Jeremy Corbyn. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of sad, like when, you know, politics are so like bleak and dire that you, there's not even like this overwhelming, you know, like positivity about the Tories being out because we literally just have like Tory light. Like we just have Tory light, Keir Starmer, who is like, I'm like his number one hater. Um, but that's the day that we're coming from today. And finally... I feel better from Glastonbury. Yeah, guys, we're gonna be, this is going to be the Glastonbury debrief episode. It's going to be the Glastonbury debrief episode. We're not going to get into it just yet. But today is like the first day. Today's Friday. I got back on Monday. Today is the first day that I fully feel like back to myself. And I would like to say that the last episode I filmed was nearly a month ago was when I filmed the dating apps episode. And guys, let me tell you, it's gone down a treat. It's gone down an absolute treat. You guys are being so, so nice about it in the comments. And, you know, I I hate saying I announced my breakup because that like feels like an ick. It feels like an ick. You know why it feels like an ick? It feels like an ick because I'm not sure which of my friends are going to listen to this episode, but I feel like the most likely episode that my friends who aren't influencers are going to listen to is the Glastonbury debrief episode because the people who were with me at Glastonbury are probably going to want to listen to this. So I try to like tone down my chronically onlineness around them. So I feel like they, if they're listening to this, which I don't think they will be, but if they're listening to this, they're going to be like, oh my God, Jordan announced, like cringe, Jordan announcing her breakup, cringe. But sorry guys, sometimes I have to talk like this. But in my last episode, I obviously spoke to you guys about my breakup and literally guys, when I filmed that episode, it didn't go up for ages because the sponsor was due in July. I just like pre-filmed it because I wanted something to do. It was literally like five days after the breakup that I filmed that and I was bouncing between sublets. I felt like I was just in this constant state of limbo and it was like, 
like quite a difficult time. Like obviously it was a difficult time anyway because I was going through a breakup. Um, but it was a, you know, specifically difficult time because of that limbo I was in. Um, but now I am no longer in limbo. It feels like I am back in my home. Um, I'm by myself now and I've got two more months because, oh my God, I just feel so happy spoken to you guys about this. I am moving in with Jack. Yes, guys, that Jack. Yeah, that Jack. Like we are moving in together um, at the end of August. We think is the move-in date. We haven't gotten the exact move-in date yet, which is a little bit annoying, but it's okay. Um, we're Me and Jack are moving in together and it's really exciting. I really did think because I haven't really... I don't think I've ever lived by myself because, you know, the time that I did live by myself, quote unquote, sorry guys, I have my wellies on today because it was raining. Let me show you guys for anyone that's watching. I've got my wellies on and I'm trying to avoid moving them because they are literally, whenever they touch, they make that same noise. That, do you remember the episode of Spongebob when Spongebob had those big black boots? <laughs> And he's like, well, how can I take your order? And he's like, um, <laughs> the big squeaky boots. Like, that's how I feel. But sorry, we're already going off track. Um, but yeah, no, so I have never really lived by myself, to be honest, because when I moved into my last place, I was with my ex-boyfriend and he was there all the time. So I've never really had to live on my own before. Um, and I was, I was kind of dreading it. Like, I'm going to be honest. I work by myself. Um, and I'm such a people person. Like I am a one, like I've taken one of those tests and it says like, I'm a 100% extrovert. Like I, you know, being around people really feeds me. Even if I'm like sat with someone and we're both just like sat on our phones or watching a film, I like being in other people's company. Like it energizes me. It energizes me. Um, so I was kind of dreading it. Like, I'm going to be honest. I was really, you know, i not really worried, but I sort of expected that this next two months is just going to be me sort of sitting around waiting for the move out date. But I can't lie. I'm actually having quite a nice time. Um, you know, not only do I think that being back in that space and being on my own is giving me like, the space and the time to be able to, you know, fully grieve this relationship properly. Um, but also I feel like I can finally say goodbye to the area that I live in because I, I'm, I'm moving out. I'm finally saying goodbye. Um, I'm moving to a different area and I, I'm not going to lie. I'm really devastated to be leaving the area that I live in. Um, I'll tell you guys where I, where I used to live once I move, um, because obviously I don't want to dox myself, but I am, I'm, I'm really, really heartbroken to be leaving. Like I, I really, really loved that area. I think it's a good thing that I'm leaving. I think it's a good thing to get a fresh start and to be able to, you know, you know, create new memories in a new area. And I really thought I was going to struggle by myself, but number one, I feel like I really truly get to spend this next two months saying goodbye. Um, I don't know why I feel like I could cry. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't expecting this. Um, obviously it's like everything that's going on, but like, I think saying goodbye to the area, I'm going to find so hard. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's Glastonbury, it's Glastonbury. I'm just feeling emotional. Um, I've been living in that area for the past like three years. I don't know why I feel so emotional. <laughs> I've been living in that area for the past three years and it was like my, it was the first place I moved out of when I moved out of home and it just feels like my home and I'm like so sad to be saying goodbye. Um, you know, I would have loved to have stayed, but it actually like really wasn't cost effective. Like I'm going to keep it real. Jack wanted an extra room for his library. Um, and it, it was just like, it, you know, the places in the area were looking really scarce, which is such a huge shame because I really, really do, um, love living in the area that I live in. Um, but also I think it's a good thing to say goodbye. Like, I think I do associate the area with my ex and like all of the memories that we made there together and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm so sad to be saying goodbye, but I do absolutely think that I will be back. Like, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully when somebody um, who owns like a big production company, somebody that works for the BBC or Channel 4, 
Four or ITV wants to uh, give me my documentaries to present and wants to give me a little chance, um, then hopefully then maybe I'll be able to buy somewhere or something and then I'll be able to move back um, because I, you know, it doesn't feel like goodbye. Like that's like, sometimes when I move out of an area, like when I moved out of my hometown, I knew that I would never be back there. Like obviously, you know, going back to see family and stuff and my mom. Um, but I knew that I would never be back there. But saying goodbye to this area, I'm like, you know what? I know that I'll be back and that's fine. Um, yeah, basically. So um, I can't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I feel like there's two months I can feel like I can finally say goodbye and I can really take my time and um, yeah, pretty much. Like that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, and then I am off and out and I move to a different area, still in North London, babe, obviously. I'll never ne- leave North London. Um, but yeah, pretty much. So that's what I've been doing. And I think something that, you know, I... And again, I'm not going to get into like anything related to specifically the breakup because obviously, no offense guys, literally none of your business. (laughs) I love you all. You're all literally my best friends. Um, But you know, it's none of your business what happened between us or anything. But um, in relation to me sort of being single is that I, you know, I haven't been single um, in a really, really long time. I've, I've really, really bounced from relationship to relationship. Like I haven't spent a Valentine's day alone since I was 17 and now I'm 25. Like it's, it's crazy. And I, I think you, you know, I think what I kind of like so far about being alone is that you have to proactively make plans. Um, you can't just, you know, you're no longer relying on another person who's constantly around you, um, for, you know, socialization. Um, and I'm kind of enjoying it. Like what's my plans for this weekend? Should we run through my plans? So my plans are that on tomorrow, tonight, which is Friday, uh, me and my friend from school are going to go out for dinner. Uh, we're going to this restaurant called Caraval, which is near Essex road. Um, it is so nice. It's one of my favorite restaurants. So we're going to go there together, maybe grab some drinks after. And then tomorrow I was meant to be going to my friend's birthday barbecue, but unfortunately it's a little bit out of the way and I've got like multiple plans. So I just don't think it's going to work. So tomorrow I'm going to a friend's house for lunch. Then I'm meeting some of my girlfriends to go and watch the football. And then I'm going to go back to my friend's house for some drinks afterwards. I've been having like bestie withdrawals from my friends that I went to Glastonbury with. Um, Like I've actually been having bestie withdrawals. Like I think, you know, my friend Katty was telling me that after a breakup, you sort of like really appreciate life a lot more. Um, And you start to see like the beauty in the everyday because you went through like a real month or two months of just two months of just like pure shite and like pure emotional torment. Um, And I feel like that's what I'm experiencing right now is like the healing powers of platonic love and being able to spend like five days with the people that you love. You sort of realize like, oh my God, like, you know, romantic love is amazing don't get me wrong but it's not the be all and end all and you can survive without it um you know sorry we're really going off on a tangent here but I do think that you know my sort of hot take is I honestly think that platonic love is the most unconditional love of all because you know when it comes to familial love they love you because they're your family I love this person because they're my mum I love her because she's my sister and with relationships and romantic relationships you know you love someone because you know you live with them or you have sex with them or you love them because you know it's romantic with friends you literally just love them because they are them you know it's very rare that friends um you know have like beneficial arrangements like I find the friendships that I have in my life the beneficial arrangement is that I get to spend time with them and they make me laugh you know it, there's, there's nothing in relation to sex or or uh, to living together or money or being related or anything like that, or just spending such extended amounts of time with each other that you just end up liking each other. It's literally, you like each other because they are them and you are you. And I just think that's beautiful, you guys. I think that's beautiful. Um, But yes, I do hope that in the future, I will be able to make a podcast episode about like, you know, being single, breakup advice, coming out of a long-term relationship, because it can be a very 
daunting and confusing and scary and just really strange time like it's like the only way I can describe it is that it's such like a limbo time like it doesn't feel real now that I'm sort of out of the other end um you know not in terms of like emotional healing but in terms of like you know like the sort of the 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 big bulk of like the breakup is done um and now like the dust has settled I feel you know just like so different and I do hope that one day I'll be able to like share some like tips and advice with you guys because it is just such an insane, like I still cannot believe the most, like this has been the most insane month of my life. June, 2024, I fear it's going to go down in the history books as like the craziest month of my life. Um, But, you know, I think it's kind of interesting actually that I wouldn't describe June as a bad month. I would describe it as like a transformative month. You know, it's been painful, but I don't think all pain is bad. You know, pain is weakness leaving the body, guys. Um, so before we get into the big Glastonbury debrief, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, should we do a little TV show I'm watching, book I'm reading, songs I'm listening to? So the TV show I'm watching is, I did watch Bridgerton season three when I got back from Glastonbury and I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. I actually really enjoyed Mina Lay's review on it actually. Um, I thought she hit the nail on the head with um, a lot of her issues with the season. I don't, I'm not big enough of a Bridgerton stand to be like, oh, I have issues with it. I just thought it was like mindless fun. Um, and I think, oh my God, it was when I like got back, I got back on like Monday at 7 p.m. I got in, I posted something on my close friend's story, obviously, priorities. Um, And then I had a lovely hot shower. I used the toilet and sat on the toilet seat and it just felt so luxurious. Um, I got into like a big t-shirt, ordered a a fire away pizza in London, guys. Fire away pizza is so fucking good because I don't, my favorite pizza used to be Domino's, but Domino's are on the BDS boycott list. So I don't um, buy from Domino's anymore. Um, But fire away pizza, I got a drink and what else did I get? Garlic sauce. I got something else. I think I got a San Pellegrino as well. Guys, I'm actually so addicted to San Pellegrino right now kind of love it. This is the Melograno and Arantia, which is orange and pomegranate. Mm. <sighs> Little ASMR for you guys. One second. What was I saying? Oh yeah. So, and, and, and then I put on Bridgeton season three, I ate my pizza and it was just so good. I was back in my bed. I've been reunited with Boots. Yeah. Bo- iconic duo is back. Jordan and Boots. Like love it. Um, and yeah. And then also I watched the most insane documentary a couple of weeks ago. It's executively produced by Louis Theroux, but it's directed by, let me have a look. It's directed by Nick August Perna. So you guys are not ready for how insane this documentary is. So basically this documentary is about a scandal of a, was she his carer? I'm not sure whether you can really count her as his carer. Um, But basically, so there is this young man who has... I think it was cerebral palsy. Um, He has, he needs assistance all hours around the clock, assistance and care. He needs someone to, you know, dress him, bathe him, help him use the bathroom, help him, you know, live his life. And his mum and his brother take care of him. It's very important to note as well that he is black as well. Um, So introducing his brother's college professor, I can't remember her name, who is this, um, you know, I think she's like the same age as him maybe, um, cause he's like 30, but he's very small. He's like five foot three um, and he has a severe disability. Um, and she is talking about this thing called facilitated communication, where her belief is that when it comes to people who are disabled, most of the time, you know, they have complex thoughts, feelings, emotions, um, but they just don't have, you know, it's like their, their, their disabilities in their brain and their body is stopping them from being able to communicate. Um, you know, so it's not necessarily them that is struggling. It's the world is not sort of, um, fitted around them. So there's this thing called facilitated communication where he sort of points at, he types on a keyboard 
um, what he wants to say, but because he's got cerebral palsy, his hand like can't point directly. So she guides his hand and he can type things to her. And facilitated communication is very controversial. Um, you know, some people think that it works. Other people think that it's actually the person who's the facilitated communicator. So the person who's assisting them is actually the person who is writing the thoughts. Even if it is completely subconscious, really it's them. Um, I think what I liked most about this documentary was that it just leaves you feeling so confused after, which I think is the way a documentary is supposed to be. Um, so essentially the young man who has cerebral palsy and the woman who's helping him with the facility communication begin having an affair. Um, that affair becomes a physical sexual affair. They say that they are in love with each other. He's saying he's in love with her through his facilitated communication board. Um, and she basically starts saying to his mom, oh, he uh, doesn't like beer. He likes wine. He doesn't like uh, gospel music. He likes classical music. You know, essentially it was all very strange. Um, and she got sent to prison, but she ended up getting, there's like a word for it, where basically the charges got taken off because they threw out a lot of the facilitated communication, communicating evidence. But basically it's sort of, you know, the question is about consent. It's about disabled people having sexual desires and romantic desires, um, you know, it's it, it covers a lot of things. It covers a lot of things to do with race as well. Personally, my personal opinion is that I, I do think that it was abuse. Um, I don't think the way that she behaved, um, you know, especially hearing from his family, hearing from his brother as well. Um, it's absolutely horrific, in my opinion, um, what she did to him. Um, you know, I whether it was from her subconscious or not, she was in a complete position of power um, and she should not have abused that power, which is exactly what she did. Um, but I highly, highly recommend watching the documentary for anyone who hasn't. It's really, really well done. Um, and if anyone has any documentaries that they recommend um, in that sort of similar style, please send them over. I, th I, I thought it was super, super interesting. And then the books that I'm reading. So I am reading two books right now. The first book I'm reading, which I need to still get into the flow of. So the first book I'm reading, which I haven't gotten into it, into it yet, is by Oshin McKenna. It is Evenings and Weekends. Um, Jack highly, highly recommended this. I literally saw him reading it and he was going like, <gasps> like absolutely loving it. So I absolutely need to get more and more into this. But the book that I, so I read a breakup book um, literally straight after my breakup. Um, I read Notes on Heartbreak by Annie Lord. And Annie Lord is telling the story about when her boyfriend of five years broke up with her out of the blue um, or what she felt like was out of the blue. And when I, you know, I really wanted to read a book about a breakup because, you know, some of my friends disagree with me, but I'm the type of person where if I'm going through something, I like to, you know, read about it and listen to podcast episodes about it and things like that, because I like to be able to contextualize my feelings and figure out sort of what's going on inside me. And also it makes it, it, it makes me feel a lot less alone as well. So I knew I wanted to buy this book. I saw Keelan Moncrief recommend it, which by the way, I recorded a podcast episode with her over on her podcast. It was so, so fun. Um, so make sure you guys go check that out. I will leave it linked in like the little um, information bit and like the little YouTube description. Um, I saw she recommended it. So I was reading it and, you know, Annie Lord's experience is quite different from my experience, like her breakup experience. So at first I was like, oh, I feel like maybe I'm not really going to relate to this. But let me tell you guys, I could not have read anything better during my breakup it was, you know, I've never felt like my feelings have been put into writing and articulated as well as when I read that book. And I was just, you know, every single time, like it's every single time I turned a page, especially towards the middle, I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. Cause it just felt, ex it felt exactly like what I was going through. And there was one specific thing, which I'm going to read out to you guys because it came at the perfect time. So for a little bit of context, I actually went to Glastonbury with my ex's friends. And for a while, I was feeling pretty anxious um, that 
everybody would think that I was a freak (laughs) and a loser and sort of people were going to be like looking over their shoulder like what the fuck is she doing here um and it made me feel very nervous um so and you know there's been like quite a few moments like that where I've been like doubting myself and thinking like what am I doing like I, I I I you know things like that Anyway, so this is the segment. Okay, so this is a story about when Annie goes to the club to her ex's friend's birthday and is expecting to see her ex there. We get in a taxi and I look out of the window and focus on not being sick, burping out trapped air and thinking about the cold wind hitting my face. I look at my watch and I've got two hours and 12 minutes before I have to get up and go to the train station. I thought tonight's love story would be Joe watching me as some hot guy whispered in my ear, but really it wasn't much to do with him at all. Instead, it was Adam coming out even though he had work in the morning and seeing Rupert and realizing people still like me even though I'm not Joe's girlfriend anymore and how if people say you should come I will do unapologetically because it probably does mean they want me to be there these people I knew when I was with him haven't gone anywhere and they don't like me any less now that I'm not joined to him in fact maybe they like me more because they see me more clearly as if I'm in full daylight and not something standing behind someone else guys (laughs) The way I burst into tears when I read that, like I'm in full daylight and not something standing behind someone else. Like, incredible. Like, it, yeah, it was like, I I needed this. I needed that book. And I, yeah, like I, I, I feel, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe my brain isn't working properly. Maybe I should have waited an extra day before I filmed this. Um, and the songs I'm listening to is I've been listening to the Club Shy album by Shy Girl. I saw Shy Girl at Glastonbury. Um, I have never really listened to a lot of her music, um, but she was amazing. She was absolutely amazing. She's actually one of my highlights. And I think that's the best part about going to Glastonbury is that, should I call it Glastonbury or should I call it Glasto? Glasto. Or do you think, I worry in case calling it Glasto, I'm going to sound like a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but the best thing about going to Glastow is that you, the acts that you, you know, weren't planning on seeing usually end up being the best ones. Um, so I've been listening to Club Shy specifically Forever um, and Mr. Useless. And I think there's another one. I think it might be called Fuck. I'm not sure, but really, really good album. Highly recommend. Um but yeah, guys, let's get into it. I do, like, I low-key cringe. I am low-key cringing that I'm making a podcast episode called the Glasto Debrief episode. Because, you know, I, I think, first of all, I just think I care too much about what people think of me. Like, bull. Um, But I do think I'm like, oh my God, do you reckon people on Instagram are like, shut the fuck up? <laughs> Like, do you think people are like, we don't care. We don't care that you went to Glastonbury. Like, I've gone once and like now it's, this is my entire personality, it feels like. I, you know, I wanted to film this debrief episode whilst the memories were still fresh and whilst I was still on the high. And let me tell you guys, the crash... Oh, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you know, nonstop drinking for like four or five days and, you know, but for me, it's more like the crash of being back in reality. That's like so hard. Um, so I've been fighting for my life, fighting for my life for the past three days. Today is like the first day that I'm finally feeling back to myself. But even then, like, look, one thing I will say is I totally get Becca, the festival girl on TikTok now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I totally understand why she goes to a festival every weekend. Like it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And now I'm sort of just counting down the days until I've got Deck Mantle at the end of the month which is like a festival in Amsterdam. It's like a techno festival that I'm like so excited about. And now I'm just like counting down the days until the next festival, until the next night out. Like, thank God I'm seeing all of my friends this weekend because like, I feel like I'm getting bestie withdrawal. I'm getting bestie and happiness withdrawal. Um, But so the debrief, 
let's get into it. Um, so the tickets, the tickets, the tickets, the tickets. How did I get the tickets? Well, we all know here, if you're, if you're a listener of the pod, we all know here that I actually didn't even get tickets in the first two sales. There's two sales in November, two sales in April. I, half of our friends got tickets and the other half of us didn't. It was the trenches. I was suffering because I suffer quite severely with FOMO itis. Um, FOMO, like I hate missing out. And it felt like that I was about to get the worst FOMO of my life. So I was really, really miffed, but I was going to try for the resale. And basically the resale is when people don't pay off the deposit of their ticket. So the ticket goes back up on resale. Um, and really luckily I managed to get tickets and I do think that getting tickets in the resale even though there's less of them it's a lot easier um because so many less people are trying two months before um than everybody trying in November do you know what I mean so I got coach tickets from Brighton (laughs) because I panicked from Brighton I traveled up there with my lovely friend Dom um you know got to fill him in on like all the Gen Z slang because there is a language barrier between us there is a little bit of a language barrier between us he doesn't really understand what I'm saying um half of the time but also I do think that that goes both ways because he replied to one of my messages and said top banana yeah he replied like okay top banana I was like what the fuck did you just say to me (laughs) I was like what the fuck did you just say to me and he then explained to me like top banana. It's like a, how do you describe it as like, I guess, is it like saying slay? Like, oh, that like, okay, slay. Like, is it sort of like that? Or is it like saying like, okay, no, it's not like saying calm. It's like saying like, like, oh, that's, that's like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's top banana. Like that's slay. Is that, is top banana the straight millennial version of slay? I think it might be, way. So there's a language barrier between us, but luckily we could break down our barriers of communication through our six hour coach journey to Glastonbury. (laughs) I remember towards the end, we were truly running out of steam. Like I just gave up on making conversation. We just sort of sat there in silence, like for like the last hour. And I just kept saying like with increments of 10 minutes of me being like, sorry, I have nothing else to say. Or just looking out of the window and going, cow. <laughs> um, but, so we got the coach on the third, oh my God. Okay, first of all, let me tell you guys about my insane Thursday morning. So as we all know here, um, well, actually, no, we don't all know here. I have been looking for somewhere to live for the past three weeks. And look, I've, I've handled the London rental market before. Somehow it gets worse. And this was the worst I have ever, ever, ever experienced the rental market. And I've moved twice in London. Uh, One of them was during sort of on the back end of COVID. So it was like a piece of piss. Um, But, oh my God, like guys, it wasn't got, it hasn't got to do with me not being accepted. It's got to do with me not even being able to get a viewing. It was so bad. And I had been messed around by quite a lot of estate agents, um, you know, being told, okay, we'll call you back to book it, calling them back. And then them saying that the property's gone. Um, like it, I felt like totally powerless and me and Jack had also been rejected from a really, really nice property. Um, and we were just like, oh my God, like this is awful. So anyways, we end up finding this place that we both really like, equal size bedrooms, it's fucking massive, third bedroom for his library, like, yeah, yeah, and we're meant to have the viewing on Monday, but because there's Airbnb guests in there, because it's an Airbnb, which has been turned into, like, long let, um, the viewing gets pushed back to Wednesday, which is absolutely fine, absolutely fine, because I'm going to Glastonbury on Thursday and you know, I've got to travel to Brighton to then get the coach. It's fine. Um, so I then get a phone call on, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, like, are you free on Thursday? I was like, no, I'm not. I'm going to Glastonbury. 
she's like, we cannot do Wednesday. So then I'm like, all right, fine. I can do Thursday morning. It ends up getting pushed back again on Thursday morning to around like half 10 a.m. Jack oversleeps and misses the viewing. Um, but I went, sent the offer in whilst I was still in the flat because it was absolutely perfect. And then I went home, got my bag, picked up my bag, went to Victoria, met Dom, got the train down to Brighton, Brighton, grabbed a drink, jumped on the coach. It, yeah, it was, it was chaos. Like it was insane. And then guys... I get a phone call from the estate agent whilst I'm on the coach saying that me and Jack got the flat. Oh my God, guys. It felt like something from a film. When I'm telling you the London rental, sorry, my hair's getting on my tits. Um, when I'm telling you the London rental market is bad, I'm saying the estate agent told me that there are over 30 applications per property. These landlords are laughing at us. They are laughing at us. They're creasing at us. They're taking us for a fucking joyride, little pricks. <sighs> but I found out that I got the house and I was so happy. We also ran into a few people that Dom knew and they gave us drinks, which was so kind. Um, it was just, it was just such a good day. So we get there. We actually got in at around 10 PM. So it took us around six hours to get there. And what I will say is I am absolutely going on the Wednesday next year if we manage to get tickets. I am absolutely going on the Wednesday. I think that we actually lost so much time getting in on the Thursday. Um, so I think that's like my only guess and regret is not going on the Wednesday and not getting a Wednesday ticket because we only really had three days at the festival and we should really have five. We should really have five. Um, but should we do, should we rate my Thursday outfit? Shall we rate my Thursday outfit? My Thursday outfit was I like, actually just wore what I traveled in, but I took off my tracksuit bottoms. So I was wearing this like little tanker purple vest top. I was wearing these little Isabella Verona like little black slinky shorts, which is so cute. And there's actually like this little matching top where if you like roll it up, you can turn it into like a little bodysuit. And I think I'm gonna do that because it's so cute. I think I'm gonna like buy it and then like do it. Like maybe for like deck Mantle or something or like another festival. Guys, I'm literally such a festival girl. Like I'm literally turning into Becca the festival girl on TikTok who I'm actually obsessed with. And I had like this little juice couture jacket and the shoes I wore the entire time. If I played a smash or pass on all of the things that I brought to Glastonbury, the biggest smash would be the shoes that I wore, which I wore black Salomons. Absolutely a massive fucking shout. So many people were telling me, oh, you don't wanna wear those, they're brand new, you're gonna get them ruined. Didn't get them ruined. Um, I need to give them like a little wipe because they're a bit dusty, um, but did not get ruined. Don't regret it, comfiest shoes. My feet only started hurting um, on my feet pain hit me on Sunday morning, no, Monday morning technically, at 4 a.m. and I had to tap out because my feet were about to fall off. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm texting. I'm texting, but yeah, I like completely don't regret the shoes that I bought at all. You know what I do regret though? I am a fool and I watched so many like what to pack for Glastonbury videos, TikToks, my entire, like I have a very obsessive personality here. We all know this. We all know that I have an obsessive personality. Like this isn't new. I literally have the mental illness of OCD, like duh. Um, so when I managed to get the tickets, I just became like Glastonbury obsessed. And I watched so many packing list videos. Every single person said, make sure you bring a jacket. I, you know, in that, in my mind, that translated to, oh my God, let me bring my little mini juicy couture jacket for night. I was fucking freezing. I was absolutely fucking freezing. Again, I don't, it's not like I'm like, oh, I really regret not bringing my jumper. Like I made it work. It's fine. Most of the time you're in a crowd. And also the boys let me their jumpers a lot because they would often overheat. So it's all good. Um, but yeah, like I, next time I would absolutely bring like a big jumper. I think because I could not fit that much stuff into my bag and my bag was so heavy that the thought of like tying a jumper around my waist, it, no, overstimulation central over stimulation central no fucking way um but yeah like that's like the outfit it was cute it was cute but my overall um thing that i would absolutely pack next time is a big jumper um because even when i was like queuing to get the coach home i was really chilly because it started raining and all i had was my tiny juicy couture jacket <laughs> um so 
On the Thursday, um, we just sort of stayed in like the San Remo levels area um, and the stages finished at 3 a.m. And I had a fucking blast. We saw Shy Girl, who was so good, so, so good. Um, And it was just so fun. We went to the San Remo stage as well, which was a bit packed. So nobody wanted to stay there, but I was fucking loving it. Like I was loving the energy. And I think the good thing about Glastow is that everybody is on good form everybody is on good form because people have like you know it sounds dramatic but people do really work hard to get these tickets and like some people are literally going for the first time some people it's like the thing that they look forward to the most in the year like when I was back Lena sent a message into the group chat like oh my god like I'm getting anxiety over the fact that next year is so long away and I'm like same like because it was so so good um but yeah, like it was, it was honestly like, oh man, Thursday was really fun. I think I went to bed at like half four because I conked out. I sl- I slept on the floor the entire time because I thought I brought a self-inflating air bed. <laughs> I thought I brought a self-inflating air bed and then Dom had a foot pump, but every single time it got around to it, it's just a bit of an asshole move asking someone to pump up your bed for you, isn't it? I think this is like a new transition that I'm experiencing now being a single babe. Um, is first of all being in the singles tent on a holiday or a festival or being in like the singles room. Like, I can't believe I'm now in the singles room. It feels so weird. Um, but also like the transition of just not being able to ask someone to do things for you. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Can you guys hear that? A little, little bit of ASMR for you. One second, guys, I'm buying something. (laughs) Okay, sorry, I'm back. I literally keep getting so distracted by my phone. No! But yeah, people are really, really not messing about when they say that it's absolutely fucking freezing. And I actually remember on Friday. So one thing about my friends. I love them. I do. But I am like, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I think it's like one of my like worst traits is that I'm a very impatient person. You know, when I'm like ready to get and go, like I'm ready to get and go. Like I, I, I can't really sit and wait. Um, and I was waiting for all the girls to finish getting ready. And I thought I was going to like lose my mind because I just wanted to get and go. Um, and then Lena's like, I'm just getting changed. I'm just getting changed into something warmer. I'm just getting changed into something warmer. Lena essentially came out in a swimming costume. It was so fucking funny. She came in this teeny tiny little bralette and this little mini skirt. And everyone just looked like, Lena, you cannot wear that out. You're going to fucking freeze. It was so funny. But yeah, like that's all my, like most nights I just went back to the tent and put on a tracksuit. Like that's just what you're going to do. Um, oh my God, look at me giving Glasto advice when I've literally been once. Girl, but I'm... Um, but shall we talk about Friday? Friday was my favorite day. Should we quickly rate my outfit? I wore this amazing gray set. It was like a little off the shoulder top and a little pair of booty shorts from Offcut Studio. Highly, highly recommend buying from them. The quality is so good. The material is so soft. Um, Absolutely loved this outfit. Um, And today, Friday was a great day. So me and Colby, we went on a little adventure. Uh, We did some exploring and then we went to go see Barry Can't Swim, who was really good. The set was really fun. And then afterwards we went to Sugar Babes and let me tell you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we all know here how much I love Sugar Babes. We all know here how much I love Sugar Babes. My favorite Sugar Babes song is Hole in the Head and then it's Lost in You and then it's Round Round and there's obviously many others and they played their bangers. They sung Flowers. Like it was amazing. It was easily my highlight for the festival. Nearly cried multiple times. It was so fucking good. They were amazing. And they, once again, their stages were over capacity. Um, Jack and Dot didn't get in so they definitely they definitely need to have a pyramid slot next year because it like I wish that everybody could have experienced that it was my absolute highlight of the festival it was amazing I feel like sorry if this um like debrief is a little boring um but I feel like all I can say about things is that was amazing that was amazing um and then and then we went back to the tent I think we grabbed something to eat 
We had a little chatter, a little pre-drink, and then we went to go see Jamie XX. I have never seen Jamie XX before. I don't listen to his music, but it was so fun. It was so fun. The tent was really fun and good. And it was a great time. Of course, everybody was on good form. The whole group was on good form, to be honest. Um, and then we also saw Chris Stussy, who I really, really wanted to see because I listened to his Boiler Room Edinburgh set and I thought it was so, so good. Well, I will say, what, like, I, he seems like a lovely guy, but it was not as good as his Boiler Room set. I will say it was nowhere near as good as the Boiler Room set, but it was still really, really fun. And I'm really glad that my friends decided to come with me because I really did think that no one would want to come. Well, at the time, the vibe was looking that no one was going to come and see Chris Stussy with me. And I really, really wanted to go and see Chris Stussy. So I was happy. I was happy. And then we obviously, we, then we ended up getting in at like 7 a.m. <laughs> Like a lot of the time when I'm saying like the shouting out the acts where I'm like, oh, I saw this person, I saw this person. It's because that's the people that I know. A lot of the DJs that I saw were people that I didn't know. It was people that my friends wanted to see, um, but I still had a good time anyway. Um, so that was like so, so fun. I feel like this episode is being really boring. So I'm literally just saying this was so fun. This was so fun. Um, but yeah, we got in at 7 a.m. And then we like got into the 10 and we were all just like sat in one of the compartments talking oh <laughs> guys it was so so cute and then I started getting like severe shakes at like 8 a.m and I was like I've got to go to bed um and then woke up two years two two years later go by um woke up two hours later and then cracked on for Saturday Saturday was also really fun I saw this band that me and Cobby had seen across the tracks who were really good um who else did we go to see we went to body movements um and then we met everyone at Kasabian we didn't see a lot of Kasabian and then we what did we do after that god I'm really trying to remember oh we went to go see Orbital one thing that I that I think I would do next year is I do think if there's an act that I really want to see and no one wants to come with me I will just go by myself because there's a few acts not even a few there's like a, just a couple of acts that I really wish that I'd gone and seen um I do think that I wish I'd done more pyramid stage stuff we were very like DJ DJ um, focused and I think I would definitely do more um, pyramid stage acts because a lot of my highlights were at the pyramid stage and let me tell you guys on the Saturday first of all we saw Orbital who were amazing um, I've never heard them before or listen to their music but they brought out Mel C and I literally nearly cried multiple times because like the sun was setting and everyone had the flags and it was so busy and it was literally so beautiful oh my god why we're on Saturday Saturday we decided to do a pink day um little matching color day and we all were pink and we all looked so cute I was wearing this like little blue okay that sounds stupid but I was wearing this little blue sheer top which is on the first side of my Instagram and I thought the post was going to be taken down because my nipples were out but it did not and then I wore like these little pink crochet shorts I had again yeah, my trainers and then I just like put my little zip up jacket over the top we just all looked so good I think that's something that I quite like about like going to a festival like a proper big festival or like going on holiday is that my friends have never looked sexier like my friends have never looked sexier because everyone's like doing prep. Like my prep was that I got my hair done. I got my nails done. I got hair tinsel put in. I fucking shaved my legs. Like that's how you know that shit's getting real. I shaved my legs and it was just so good. Like we all looked incredible. All the girls looked amazing. Lovely long hair, fresh outfits. All the boys had like really fresh fades. Everyone just looked so good. Um, <laughs> so we saw Orbital. And then after Orbital, we went to the Bimble Inn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to fill you guys in on the Bimble Inn law, and I do have concerns that this is going to be like, you know when you're explaining an inside joke to someone and they don't get it, um, or it's just nowhere near as funny as like the joke itself. So for example, me and Alfie, it literally happened three years ago, I'm pretty sure, nearly three years ago. But so we had like this, in, it's not even an inside joke. We were just, we were both hung over and delirious, I would like to say, but we were creasing. <laughs> we were fucking creasing. 
at those you know when you go to Thought Park and there's like the water rides and obviously like you get really wet and it's like ah but you know like there's like very small subsection of children who they don't even go on the ride they just like stand in the way of like the tide and let themselves get covered and they go like this <laughs> and like sacrifice themselves oh my god man we were creasing we were creasing over like how funny that was every single time we tried to tell someone nobody like i'm not even joking i nearly wet myself that night i was like tears streaming down my face thought it was so so funny and then every single time we tried to tell someone it's like nowhere near as funny and I feel so bad about it like not bad about it I feel like so embarrassed and then again when me and, re when me and Alfie tried to retell it with the context of nobody ever finds this funny people still don't find it funny but anyways yeah telling the bimble in law I feel like I feel like it's like that kind of moment but so basically <laughs> we like we're going through like all the stages and the bimble in comes up and i don't know something about the name the bimble in was so funny to me because it's giving like like the hobbit you know uh met not medieval but like you know wizardry um you know f like oh let's meet at the bimble inn like you know meeting around a roaring crackling fire um with like long white beards like th like you know when you text your friend at 4 a.m and they're also still awake and it feels like you're like gathering around a fire to meet them um you know in the shire like that <laughs> That is what the Bimble Inn was giving to me. Have you guys seen that tweet of <laughs> Have you guys seen that tweet of like Paul Meskel, Andrew Scott, Jonathan Bailey, and this other guy? And it was like a picture of them, and someone tweeted when the hop when the Shire gets a Zara. <laughs> like the Bimble Inn, it's giving the Shire. Like it's giving the Shire. So we've all decided to dedicate one day to go to the Bimble Inn. Um, and during, like, we're like creasing about the Bimble Inn. And we're finding some really weird videos from the Bimble Inn. Anyway, so on Friday, on Friday, I think it was, one of Cobby's friends messages him just completely out of the blue and says, yo, it's going off in the Bimble Inn right now. And it was just so funny. And so we decided to dedicate a day to go to the Bimble Inn. And it was so beautiful, you guys. It was so, so beautiful. The Bimble Inn goes off. It's like so cozy. And like, I feel like it's like the perfect place that I'd want to turn in for a little drink. Um, you know, like on my, on my quest through the Shire. Like, fucking love the Bimble Inn, man. Like, Bimble Inn, never change. Never change, Bimble Inn. I love you, Bimble Inn. If I ever found out that the Bimble Inn got, like, axed, I would ne- actually, no, I would absolutely go back, but I would, like, protest. I would, I would throw, like, a Bimble Inn flash mob. Okay, I'm taking this too far. This isn't funny anymore. Um, <laughs> but, shout, so, again, obviously, Went to Southie's Corner, you know, rock back in at about half six in the morning. Classic. All right, Sunday. Sunday was fun. So me and Jack, um, first of all, I sent him my what three words and accidentally sent him to the Southeast Corner when we were staying in the complete opposite direction. Do you guys want to know a tip about what three words? It does not refresh your location when you open the app. So I sent Jack my what three words and he walked all the way to the icon stage when he was meant to be walking towards Woodsies. Literally the complete opposite direction. Um, so me and Jack went on a little explore. We went to the little Glastonbury on sea, which is this pier. We went and sat by the Glastonbury sign, had some drinks. And then we went to go see Shania Twain, which was really, really fun. The crowd was on really good form. And what I will say, what I like about the pyramid stage is that because it's so big, people are stood actually really far apart from each other. When I was at the other stage, I did feel like, mm, I don't know whether claustrophobic is the right word, but I did feel like it was too crowded. Um, the pyramid stage, I never, you don't really deep how much of a big crowd you're in until you see like pictures or videos of it afterwards. But everyone was on great form. What? Oh, oh, totally crazy. Um, and then, okay, so 
there, you know, when there's an up, there must come a down. And I would like to say that during Glastonbury, I did enter my flop era for about three hours. So let me tell you guys about my three hour flop era because I wanna tell you all about the highs and the lows. So I basically have, you know, my stomach is affected a lot by my anxiety. And, you know, I have one of the, I never, ever admit this ever, but I feel like I'm like destigmatizing stomach issues. I have one of those, um, to like, can't wait cards, which is basically a card that you can have. You can actually have it in your Apple wallet where you can essentially use like restaurant toilets and, um, you can use restaurant toilets without having to buy something because you have this can't wait card, which is basically like, oh, I have a stomach issue or like a bladder issue. I have to use your toilet like immediately. Um, it does make me laugh though, because my can't wait card, it just feels like my big poopy pants card. Like it feels like the, oh my God, like I I'm a big poopy pants. Like, please let me use your toilet. And I find it really embarrassing. So I never, ever use my can't wait card. I'd actually never used it until Glastonbury where my stomach on that last day just became completely fucked. And I was like, this is really weird because I I don't feel anxious. Hmm, Jordan, hmm. Let's actually just deep what you've been consuming for the past three days. Burgers, you know, street truck food and booze and like literally just vodka slush puppies for four days straight. So my stomach was really fucked at this point. And I kept like, we would literally get into the crowd and then I would literally go like, oh, and I'd have to go and use the toilet again. It was so awful. It was so like, that was, a, and we couldn't even get a drink because the stage was so busy. It was a dire three hours. Like, it, and, and but to be fair, it was like my low of Glastonbury, but it wasn't even that much of a low. It was just, I had a bad tummy and I had to go back to my tent. Uh, but then after that, I met all of my friends at Burner Boy. And let me tell you guys, Burner Boy was amazing, amazing. I didn't realize how many of how many of his songs I knew until I until I went and saw him at the pyramid stage and it was so so good. Highly highly recommend. And I think that's definitely what I would do different next time is I would do more pyramid stage stuff because after Burner Boy we went to see Goldie which was just some drum and bass and then me and Lena went to see SZA and I've seen a lot of things about SZA pulling a smaller crowd. I think people are being a little unfair um, because she is like such an incredibly impactful artist. And I had an amazing time. I thought her set was so, so good. Um, but clearly, you know, you need to factor in all the other people that are on at the same time. Um, and also what sort of music people want to see on the Sunday. A lot of the time, Sunday is like, you know, it's the big blowout. It's the last night. A lot of people want to don't want to, you know, listen to like slow music. Um, but I thought it was fucking amazing. I nearly cried multiple times, especially when she started singing Drew Barrymore. I literally nearly cried. Like it was so amazing. And then my foot pain hit me at 4 a.m. in the Southeast corner and I walked back to the tent and I fell asleep and it was great. I have, <laughs> I have. <laughs> so Alfie sent me like all the jokes that were made on the trip to like put in this episode, but there's actually like a lot of things that I actually can't tell you about because, you know, they're not super appropriate, which I think is a huge shame because I would love to talk about like some of these things because I do think it's so funny. Like on the Friday, you know, I can't even tell the story because it doesn't make any, you know what? Ugh. And also to be fair, I don't know what stories my friends will want on this podcast because it's like, it's like a digital footprint. Do you know what I mean? So I think unfortunately I'm going to have to hold back on like, I, I won't be able to tell you guys a lot of stories. Like on this list, it says, you think it just fell out of the bimble in? <laughs> oh, oh, I wish that I could tell these stories, but I cannot, which makes me so, so sad. Um, but also guys, the journey home is literally fine. I know that people like really like big up how bad the journey home is. Basically my journey home, I was meant to get the coach back to Stratford. Like I'd booked and paid for a coach back to Stratford because obviously my coach went from Brighton 
And basically, um, I, the, when I got there and it was like 1 PM, which is when my coach went to leave, they only, no, half 1 PM. They only just started boarding the half 11 coach. And I was like, fuck this. I cannot wait any longer. So then I ended up paying a fiver to switch over, uh, to a coach to Southampton, got to Southampton. And then I got the train from Southampton to London all in all door to door. It took me about seven hours, which sounds like a really long time, but it actually really wasn't because you're sort of switching out on your journey so much. It really didn't feel like that long. Um, so I was actually pretty chuffed with my journey to be honest. I had a fine time. Um, so my reflections on Glastonbury are number one, I would definitely see first of all, best weekend of my life. Duh, obviously number one, I would definitely see more pyramid stage acts next time. A lot of my highlights were people that I wasn't even planning on seeing, but my friends wanted to see. And it was like, especially the pyramid stage, the atmosphere is so good. Everyone's on such a good vibe. It was so much fun. Um, so I would definitely see more pyramid stage acts next time. I will bring my big jumper, no matter how hot it is during the day, I am bringing my big jumper because I was fucking freezing. Um, I would also bring a modium because you never know how many, you never know when the vodka slush puppies are going to turn against you. You never know when days and days and days and days of vodka slush puppies is going to turn against you during Avril Lavigne in a massive crowd where I literally feel like I was about to shit my pants. Um, and the last thing that I'm, of my reflection on Glastonbury is the healing properties of platonic love. Uh, guys like that was the biggest takeaway was that you know obviously I was going banging on like it was the best weekend of life it was the best weekend of my life but like the big thing that I was taking away from it was oh my god I love my friend so much I love my friend so much but yeah I think I'm gonna end the episode here because I need to I need to film my Skillshare class <laughs> I need to film my Skillshare class guys mm -hmm. she's a teacher she's a teacher um but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I thought it was a really fun chilled one um I don't know what my next episode is gonna be about but I feel like I'm really in the swing of this podcast thing and I'm having a great time so I'm gonna play it by ear let me know if there's anything specifically you guys want me to talk about um and I'll see you guys soon for another episode bye